Hey everybody, this is Steve at Thousand Year Home. I'm just doing a wrap-up video this week. Man, I have been working way into the late evening hours. I couldn't video the work. Uh, rebuilding the road. We had enough rain that the road got moist enough that I was able to get the rippers and rip the uh, ditches out. So I'll go do a wrap up. Uh, this is uh, normally videos have some entertainment value, but this is my personal journal of what I'm doing and why it's taken me so long to build a house. I'm not just building a house, right? I'm off grid living. And that means restorative agriculture. It means repairing the road uh, when the uh, conditions allow. And so I have to stop what I'm doing on the house. I got enough rain to work out in the ditches and cut the ditches in, but we'll go up there. But uh, once again, the man of the hour is this little Mahindra uh, uh, 1626. Man, it punches way above uh, its weight class. I, I suppose it's a half mile to uh, three quarter of a mile road, maybe a mile. I don't know. It's long. And this thing rebuilt it. Let me rotate. So it's heavy enough because it's a steel frame underneath it to really bite down and get into this uh, cliche that's super tough. But what I did is I set up my box blade at an angle and you can't see much of the angle. At first I started with a real aggressive angle, dropped these uh, uh, down into the ditch and I drove in and rolled the ditch into the road, rolled it into the road. And I just adjusted it with the linkages there as I needed. It's uh, hard work. And then it's still got a little angle now so that the road ended up crust, uh, with a good crest on it. We'll go up and take a look at it. But then I floated the box blade about, uh, I'm going to guess, an uh, eighth to a, you know, I'm going to say an eighth above the uh, all that I had ripped. And then I went back through and just kept dragging it to the middle. And uh, I'm thinking the road looks good. What I don't know about the road is how much clay there is. But let me go out up there and we'll take a look at some of the odds and ends. So let's talk about the tools I used on this uh, road build. So the first thing I did is uh, a couple of months ago when it was soft, I went and dug the ditches back out. And uh, got that little backhoe is really good. So the, again, the attachment points to it there's a steel frame that goes all the way underneath the Mahindra so you don't end up cracking your tractor in half. I, I really am quite the Mahindra fan. Where were you? Where you were you why I built roads? Huh? So uh, I didn't use the fork truck at all because, um, out of the way, because I didn't need to move any timber or anything. I, I can't remember using the fork truck. The bucket on the front. And uh, I thought about getting uh, the teeth on the front, but the one complaint uh, people have is if the teeth aren't just right. Hey, when you're upset about food, you're not going to take it out on people. So that horse is an adopted horse to me. And if you look at her, their hooves, you'll see, uh, you'll see that he was starved. It's called a poverty line in their hooves where uh, they were. So I've slowly getting Blaze around to... To not being so aggressive about food but he thinks old Hank's to blame but you see those striations in his hooves some of them are pronounced that's where uh, a horse didn't get enough food and or water at some point in time anyway he's up an hour early because the rain and uh, he's all upset because uh, he's food aggressive because I'm not feeding him but 11 o'clock is 11 o'clock I can't have him you know mistaken time horses are smart they know the time come on so I got to stay on him about the food aggression. We're getting there on it, but that was good that y'all saw that. He's going to ride me uh, just like he did old, <laughs> old Hank. And I'll have to get rough on him because I don't allow uh, him to bully me. So he used to bite. So he doesn't anymore. He's learned that lesson. It's not all, it's not all just love it either. I'm, with a horse like that, you got to get strict. So, uh, But let me finish up my walk around of the tools. So right here, I had the bucket which I, is, come on, Blaze, right? Uh, but I didn't get teeth for it, and I, I'm pretty happy with that. The box blade, I'm really happy with this. It says Armstrong A's. I don't, made in Texas, it says. It understood Texas soil. That's a, a Harbor Freight three-point uh, hitch adapter. That makes it super easy for me to put things on and put things off, minus, of course, the backhoe, which is its own assembly. So, 
real good. It took me, uh, let's see, 10 gallons of diesel to grade this road. Uh, four bucks a piece. So you're looking at uh, $40 a gr of diesel is in my time. So, and because I have a full-time job, you know, I was doing all of this in the evening with my lights. Pretty hard to, well, not all of it. You know, I'd start late in the day uh, with my lights. And then I had the weekend. I started on the weekend. So, uh, but anyway, uh, it's hard to grade in the dark. You really can't see what you're doing with lights. And, and so it was tough, but I couldn't video record. So that's why I'm doing the, the catch up. So last thing I need is an arena drag, which I don't have. So uh, I bought this gate for my daughter so that she could uh, corral her animals, but it is awfully heavy. I think it's too heavy uh, to hang. The hinges that were on it were broken. One of them was broken, it's that heavy. So whoever pioneered this up uh, overbuilt it and it's so heavy and so long, I don't think you can hinge it up properly. Anyway, I used that as a drag, and uh, darn it, that didn't work pretty good. Now, if I was going to keep this as a drag, I'd weld another bit of, of the cattle fence over the top with a larger grid, and uh, right over the top of it, and I'd try to get it to bow out a little bit so that the, you know, it'd be bowed out, so I'd have a large grid biting in, a smaller grid helping grade. Uh, I'm going to guess that's 100 pounds or more worth of steel. All right, so there were my um, there were my tools that I used for this uh, job, and oh, and I used the truck too. Here, um, sometime on a tractor when you're on a tractor, eight or nine hours. I was way into the night, uh, way into the night. So um, it's hard on your back. <laughs> so anyway, I I used the truck to do the uh, like dragon the um, uh, the metal gate, do the smoothing work. Uh, some of the stone pickups, things like that. So let's go up and take a look at what I've got done. Oh, uh, lastly, tools. I used Weather Underground to check my window for uh, rain because I didn't want four inches of rain. So I have four days of increasingly um, harder rain that I'm hoping will pack this all down because um, I put the rakes in there and I raked it in. You know, I cut it down uh, a lot. So we'll go take a look. Uh, you can't just fill a hole in a, in a private road. Uh, it remembers that there's a hole there and what you put in will get super saturated with water. And then as people drive, it'll splash it out. You got to cut the hole out. And so you cannot repair a road without tearing it up. It's just not possible. Uh, there are no magic to road building. It's hard. Uh, you got to get ditches. You got to tear it up. Uh, the people on the road need to understand that. <laughs> I I walked around and let all the neighbors know what I was doing. And apparently, I'm going to reform the crown or dig ditches. They did not grasp. So I had five people stop. Two people offered to help. And three people bitched me out. And we'll talk a little bit more about Texas friendly, y'all. Uh, I'm an old guy. You can see I'm an old guy. I'm too old to be lectured by anybody sitting in a comfy car. Uh, so to those neighbors who stopped in their comfy car and they got a, a Texas back at them, either get out, get a rake and a help or drive on. Because I'm not going to tolerate people, uh, uh, what, an armchair quarterbacking, uh, Captain Obvious. So uh, anyway, manners in Texas matter to me. And if you don't come at me with manner, manners, I'm going to come back to you uh, with a lot less manners to straighten that situation out boundaries i got them and they're healthy and when i'm i'm working on a tractor doing my absolute best sweating for people uh, i expect a little bit of uh compliments and i expect a little bit of uh uh yeah, attaboyism and preferably i i would expect a little bit of self-sacrifice people out there working too which i did get so, uh, but, uh, my mama always said, don't, don't look at the people criticism, criticizing, find the people who help and no good deed goes unpunished. She used to tell me all true. So, but if you're going to work on a road and there's other neighbors on there, no matter how much you talk to them, there's one jackass in your neighborhood too. 
and at least one. Uh, so out of the three people that stopped complaining, one had a valid complaint. I had, uh, you know, I, I cut the fence a little bit. And so I had to go back through and fix it. That was perfectly valid. A hundred percent. I'll take that. But, uh, the other two should have got out of their car and helped me dig ditches is what they should have done. Uh, instead of lecturing me about how rough the road is getting. <laughs> anyway, they were surprised what they got back. So I'm a nice, friendly guy on YouTube, but, uh, you know, I expect manners out of my neighbors. I'm, I'm a good neighbor and I expect a good neighbor and I will elevate you in a heck of a hurry to that good neighbor attitude if I got to. So let's go back up and take a look at the work I did and see if it'll hold up in this rain. After the rain, I'll do a walkthrough, see how muddy it gets. Uh, and that'll be a good test. So this part of the road is a little stub that just goes to my, my gate uh, up to my house, rotate. So uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, now I didn't have any material to be able to make a ditch at all, nor to crown it up. So, uh, but that was a whole, of course, these were wagon, wagon ruts. This is an old pioneer road that was probably a county road at some time and then abandoned. But what I did to accommodate drainage, every so often I went ahead and put a little notch in the uh, shoulder of the grass and uh, I'll mow it down, down through the years. Now I got rain coming, so I'll see how effective these little notches were. But indeed, this would fill up like a puddle on this side. So, um... And then I graded it flat again. Uh, I did roll a little bit of soil out of here into the road. There's another notch, but not nearly enough. I mean, I, I would need to bring in some. You can see I'm starting to begin to make a crown here at the end, but on that stub, there wasn't enough to do. And uh, if you go back through my videos, you'll find that uh, I found four culverts in total, but two that I can save. And uh, so I dug this one out. I took out the unbent stuff. Stones that I find on the road, I'm going to fill up in there. Uh, eventually, the uh, bags will rot off and grass will grow on that. Or I'll spray paint it if it continues to be an eyesore. I planted, uh, you know, some, um, some plants down in there to give it coverage. It's got some morning glories and some things like that. I planted a couple of uh, sunflowers that I'm hoping the cattle won't get to just as a marker like a roadside, like a reflector, a living reflector, uh, so people don't drop a wheel off. So this is the uh, outport and all those stones I piled up from the uh, road project to keep that. So this is the main drainage for this half of the road, if I divided the road in half, and that's the drainage for the other half. So I had to rebuild this whole crown here too. So let's look at the road up through here. So it used to, grass used to start growing in about halfway to here and just wind all the way up. And uh, it was a valley and then the road would become a river. But even on my cell phone looking at it, you can see that I, I now have a little ditch and a little crown. I'm hoping it's enough. I found this culvert that uh, the fellow who was doing the road before me says, yeah, it used to drain. But uh, when I dug a little bit here, I couldn't find the end of it. <laughs> So, somewhere somewhere there's a plug i might if i ever get time if this the new one fixed one back by uh, floods I'll, I'll dig this out and find it so let's go ahead and take a drive up this road and see what we can see now i do one last i do one last thing uh when i do road work and that is i go get all the big stones out of it now that's not ever going to compact in in fact what will happen a wheel will keep hitting it and move it to a new spot and hit it again and then it digs it out makes a weakness and then eventually you end up with a uh, pothole so all of these big size stones and then I go farther down the smaller ones you'll feel on your tires you go down a road you know pink 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 and I'm using them just to uh, fill up these culverts so they don't wash out my neighbor's property I don't know how, how, when's the last time that culvert actually worked uh, and how much rain it'll send down to my neighbor. So I want to be charitable. I do like a good day on a tractor, but I do have a full-time job. So I do the full-time job and then grab up. So I'm just making this as a mental note of what I want to do later. But it also costs me three and a half, four days of work this week on my house, not including when I first dug the ditch out 
and uh, used the backhoe on it. And uh, it's not the first pass I did at it. I did an earlier pass in the spring, early spring, to see if I could even make a ditch and if the road would hold up. And indeed it did. And I cut out some of the potholes and filled them in to see if they'd turn to mud. And they didn't. So I felt good about doing the rest of this grading. We'll see with this upcoming rain, man. I I could have I could have back drug it down to clay and then if somebody gets in that spot oh it'll be a mess but with the crown on it at least we can bring in gravel and put it on top and it won't be a washout anymore where it just grabs all the dirt that you spend good money on and washes it away uh, so I, let's go down and take a look at some of the other uh, features of what I did here now this half of the road right here literally did not exist half to a third it was this grass had grown all the way out and had uh, made a crown you could see how far down i had cut you know that's six eight inches out uh, i cut a ditch in and then the middle of the road i don't know if you could still see it but it had wa the washout was here and so it would start washing out so what i did is i came in and i chopped a ditch like this so i take the water running from the top of that hill down and every now and then there's a small, you know, one inch little scoop uh, that you do feel in a car, but the idea is to take the water and, and shuttle it over uh, periodically into the ditch. And then of course into the ditch, uh, as I walked uh, up and down the road and gather up the big stones, I'm gonna go ahead and make, uh, you know, a little, uh, to slow down the flow rate of the water. I'm gonna guess 30 feet from the crown to the end there. Uh, pretty good rounding here. So, but this part might be clay. I don't know. You know, it wasn't part of the road originally. So I don't know if I surfaced road. It looks like it. Gravel. But a few places I did hit clay, which as soon as it gets wet, it'll turn to goo. Uh, and then I filled as much as I could with big rocks and gravel in there and then overtopped it. Uh, it was eight to ten inches in spots, this little washout. So this part of the road, I suppose you can see it, where the color changes. So about two-tenths of this road has never been good road, in my opinion. It's always been clay. And uh, so the big, big clay pockets, uh, washouts, mud puddles that would swallow a Volkswagen, to be honest. Big as, big as a Volkswagen or even bigger than a truck. Now, they weren't that deep. They were maybe six seven eight inches deep and of course they'd wash wash out but made it impossible you know because then as you go through the car gets the energy and as soon as it hits the one hole and settles down it digs and it starts digging other holes and then you end up with potholes on both sides and uh, i think that i've manned that up this was a big pothole spot this was a ginormous lake you could still see a little bit that it recesses in but i, I backfilled it pretty well but from here to over the crown of the hill uh, I don't know if you can, you can see that I start, I had to get the backhoe to dig this ditch. It's anything between uh, eight inches all the way up to two, two foot. <laughs> that was wrong there. And again, it, even though it's, it's down relative to the land, you'll see that I, I put the ditch in it. And so there is a crown with a ditch that should shuttle the water off uh, and get it out of here fast fast enough. I'm hoping the road will hold up. Uh, we'll see. You know, people's driveways like this, uh, even though it's not used yet, uh, I did respect it. I didn't cut the ditch through there and I tried to bring a little extra material in to crown these up. And I, I think I did pretty well on most people's driveways. So uh, we'll see whether or not, but uh, Anyway, no ditch dug there. Uh, the ditch on the other side is extra deep and the crown runs this way away from their drive. So I walked to my mailbox and, uh, you know, it's a long walk. So, but uh, after I do that and then things like that that bubble to the surface, I just kick out to the side and uh, then I come back later on with a, uh, and I try to kick them together. Uh, you know, it, it don't take me very long. And then I'll come back with a bucket and I'll gather these all up. And uh, Because uh, if people just keep running them over, they'll just keep scoring the, the road and damaging it. So this is a hill. And it's far less of a hill than it was before I started. Uh, because I lowered the crown part of it quite a bit. 
And that's where I'm concerned. I, I honestly think if I had time before the rain, I'd bring in cliche and drop it on the slope part. Uh, but at least this didn't used to exist. This, this ditch here uh, didn't used to exist, but uh, nor the crown. And it was uh, every bit of a, just a wet weather river. So I'm hoping, uh, even if it's not good soil, I'm hoping it comes off fast enough that we don't get a lot of tire digging in. We'll see, we'll see on that. So let me go down and show a couple other things about the road. So my truck sparked about halfway down uh, the steepest slope. Uh, and if you could see, uh, it's gravel down the middle. That's because that's where the washout used to be. And uh, I did not have enough material from surrounding here to fill that in. The first time I did it, when I, I broke the shoulder here, I tried to fill it in with the, uh, the topsoil slash clay. It, there wasn't enough gravel in there. Now the rest of the ditches as I dug out were more gravel than you can see that that's just topsoil in there. But, uh, and that's, that's gravel. So I'm hoping that there's enough gravel in, in this that it'll stay alive during this upcoming rainstorm. But at the very least, it'll give me a good idea. Also, every now and then I cut in a fairly aggressive uh, rain redirect. So as you go, you get a little, you get a little swoop in the car. But uh, those are by design for now in order to shuttle the rain out of the middle of the road and force it uh, into the ditch here. And it ain't much of a ditch. It's a high, <laughs> it ain't much of a ditch down that hill. Now, going down, you can see it crowns out. It, it's a really good ditch. But uh, down that hill, what uh, I, you can't fix a hole with a hole, and that's what I did. Uh, but it's all I had. Uh, what needs to be done is up this hill is uh, a lot of dirt brought in down through the middle, and it needs to be built up. And that takes money. And uh, one of the folks that one of the folks that stopped to offer no help at all, and uh, they, oh, would well, you give it back to the county? Well, you know, the answer to your problems in life isn't to ask the government to come in and help you. And the county already abandoned it, so uh, they have spoken. And uh, furthermore, if the county came in, see all these fences? They're not seven foot off a of center or off of the curb. They're on the curb. And the first thing the county would do is make make everybody, everybody move their fences uh, back. So big, big, big bit of work. So maybe we all ought to roll up our sleeves as ranchers and farmers and fix our own private road. And uh, I don't know, I debate on the county. Listen, uh, I think it is too big of a job for private citizens of mid-class to build their own roads. Now, if you're a millionaire, billionaire, I, Build your own road, you could pay for it, get a black top too. But uh, for the average family that's, uh, you know, making do as it is to then come by and, and build a road. Uh, now this road, uh, the one person who stopped, uh, he's been servicing this road per, all pretty much all by himself for eight years or more. And that's a big deal. And uh, he, he said, yeah, down through the years, uh, people have bought, parcels of land and come and gone and come to went to him and beat him up a few times about sizes of the stones in the road like he's he's going down to the gravel pit and pick oh i want that stone and uh, not that one yeah load up a bunch of big stones <laughs> no it's it's bulk gravel you, you you walk in with a dump trailer and you say oh uh Load me up, and they load you up with whatever they bring out of God's word. You don't get to pick the size of the stone, anyway. And uh, uh, it's just it's just a, a ridiculousness. So, but the fifty percent of the people you can count on. So I could put those folks in your life. <laughs> so the size of the stones. Anyway, I uh, I appreciate the. The fella, he is so charitable and kind, and uh, I do appreciate him uh, substantially. He's a good neighbor, really good neighbor, but uh, uh, it is hard. And when I did, t I, this is my third private road. Same same batch of people, uh, you know, some helpers and some nots. And I've gotten the uh, size of the stone complaint before when one of the other private roads. So I laughed when I heard that one. I said, oh, my God, they're clones. You would not think, but people speak without thinking. And... Uh, 
So uh, I'm gonna try to save a couple more oak trees that I see in the scrub here. I'll put little flags on them and hopefully I won't mow them under. But this was all at the bottom of the hill. All of the gravel had washed in so it was spongy and followed by really deep, deep, deep uh, um, potholes. Like they weren't potholes, they were sinkholes would be a better word. So one of the sinkholes started right about there, if you could see the off-color dirt, and went uh, 20 feet or more, and it took up this whole half of the road. So then everybody started driving real close to the fence here. So uh, I redeemed that hole, and then uh, by putting in a ditch here, pulled that soil back. I spread around as much of the sand that had got washed out, pushed it back up the hill to try to decrease the slope, but you know a little mahindra with a little box blade it, it's not an earth moving machine so uh but then uh the next point of interest will stop will be way down yonder you'll see that i have a little uh a home depot bucket a little red bucket down there we'll we'll stop but uh this had the same any place you see the uh leftover grass loose grass on the road that means that's some place that i i cut the the soil back and redeemed the road out from the soil and what the grass had grown up and and had created a, a, a dam which made the road the uh, the only place water could be and just kept feeding in you know the grass just kept feeding in mother nature is she's tough she'll claim back what's hers in a heartbeat so but uh again good good and smooth uh this there are some ups and downs some swales my little mahindra couldn't cut those out we'll need to bring in gravel or a heavier grader than mine so my, i should mention that as i cut out and uh dra dragged i would get these big clots of uh a fescue grass and uh, all tangled up right in my box blade and i ended up with mounds that are you know waist high I went back in with the pitchfork last night and um, sorted out the dirt from the grass and I'd end up with a little pile of dirt <laughs> and all of it would be grass. Uh, it, but it would really, it would wreck your ability to grade. I couldn't grade at all once I get enough grass built up. It did take a lot, uh, you know, softball sized clump of, of grass would be enough to wreck the grading. And, uh, but this is the last one and my back is done. I'm done, rain's on the way. So this is just an inspection for me. Mentally, I could keep track. It, the wind's like picking up, so the storm is coming in. So apologies, I know that the uh, cell phone will carry a lot more wind chop than normal, but uh, I'm not carrying my big camera. I'm just doing a drive about here. So I'm gonna to try to shield me from, uh, shield the phone close to my body, see if it decreases the wind up hop or not. Let me find out, rotate. All right, you're right up against my body. Apologize for the fingers and all that. All right, so there is one, uh, and this culvert works. And uh, I found it uh, when I was mowing uh, the first year because uh, somebody had, had run a fence post that one. And uh, my God, you run that through. But right here, underneath here, I'm going to have to get back and dig that out uh, because it's packed in again. It, I need to get back and uh, dig all of these out uh, because they all get packed in. Now, I, I might have done that while doing it, but it was already packed in when I started. And I can show you here. The old timer told me there was two drain pipes here. And I said, no, I said, I've only seen one. And uh, lo and behold, as I was driving my, dragging my box blade, bam, I hit the other culvert. I probably stripped it open if it wasn't and gouged a notch out of my bat out of my box blade, brand new box blade. Gouged a notch out of, but looky there, everybody. It is, uh, you know, plugged up and then some. I obviously didn't do that. This had been this way for a long, long time, but I'll get extensions and run these out and rebuild them. Uh, but I'm going to have to get that one culvert dug out before the rain, so I'll be getting a shovel and coming back here and doing that. And then you see the other side. This is the other side. You show me where the culvert is. Well, obviously, it's, you know, under the road and it's been that way for a long time. <laughs>
<laughs> like I say, Mother Nature. Anyway, I got the road crowned. I got a ditch. I found two uh, culverts. One I'm going to recover. Uh, mystery culverts out of four. Two out of four are, were buried. And I'll fix those two. I'll dig this one out that I know was flowing here shortly. So, uh, But every summer, uh, it's it's half, uh, half filled up. Uh, so... Uh, it's on my to-do to come back with rebar, dig it out, put safety rails on it so kids don't get sucked in, and uh, redo that with a uh, culvert uh, um, intake out of cement, like you saw I did down there. And uh, people don't like stacked bags concrete. I don't know why. They complain about it. it's not as strong as... Uh, I don't need 10,000 pounds per square inch. I'm just running water down a... Thing. the internet you know the more less people know the more um, advice they offer <laughs> and the more criticism rolled up uh, and here's the deal you know I've, I've got a degree in engineering it's not this engineering but I've done real engineering I know I say y'all fix it too and whatnot but I have spent my life being uh, uh, in the top 10% of the smart guys in the room and uh, Oh my gosh, the dumber somebody is, the more more sure they are, and the louder they get, and the more bad ideas they have. Go back to the folks criticizing, I, you know, don't tear up the road because my wife uses it. Well, I don't know how to... <laughs> well, let's factor your wife into my life then. Bring her on down, and I'll talk to her every time I'm planning to do something. It's a dumb thing to say. You got to tear up a road. And I went around. I told everybody I was going to re redo, re uh, uh, reshape the road and put in ditches. I said, that's my goal this year. And I don't know what people thought that meant. I guess they thought maybe I was just going to bring dirt and put more dirt on top, which has been tried many times, and it just cost us money. Now, if we put dirt on top, there's a ditch where it, well, the rain will run over there and not, not steal our, our dirt. So this is the end of the road here. Let me go. Ha, end of the road. Let me go ahead and step out and show you uh, what I did here. And we'll talk about the connection to the street. Well, this part's not done yet because I ran out of daylight yesterday. But uh, you'll see that I brought up a little bit of dirt. And, of course, it was mixed then with the grass, which you see here, to try to rebuild here where it's all broken out. Um, some of these you could pull in on, but that one you couldn't anymore. That one's getting to be a one or two inch drop, maybe even three inch in some spots. So it would rattle your teeth when you'd go and do it. That end was eroded and gone. But I'll tell you this much, if you would get blacktop and put blacktop in here and it goes out on the county road, they will come out and they will remove your blacktop. <laughs> they won't fix this. But if you fix it by incurring your blacktop into their pavement, they will remove your pavement. Now, I, that kind of stuff factors in when people say, oh, let's try to get the county. And I think I, I do agree. I would love to have real equipment and uh, certified civil engineers build a road. But when they send, they got road guys coming out to tell people not to have their blacktop onto the road when they pave their, their driveways and they'll come in and they'll, they'll cut it out. They'll cut it out. And sometimes they resurface it back, but sometimes they cut it out and they top gravel in. Uh, where somebody, <laughs> come on government, if somebody safely blacktops their drive to your road and they're not road speed bumps, it's not terribly done a professional job, you can leave it go. You honestly can. You can go spray paint a little green check mark or something that says, but anyway, going back to government is not your answer. I'll tell you that much. But this part, uh, so I have two things I got to get done still. Note to self at the end of this video for a wrap up. Note to self. Dig out those that one culvert and uh, come down here and with a pitchfork and get this grass out of here and throw it to the side. And, uh, and I'm the one that, uh, some, I mow this sometimes. Uh, and I'm not the only one that mows it. Uh, but I'll need to make sure I can safely pass a mower through this without big stones. So that'll be uh, something I'll get done uh, here today uh, off camera. No need for you to see me use a shovel. Uh, and then later on, I will dig out and patch those uh, mystery culverts that are totally buried. And I'll go ahead and um, 
get those flowing water again, uh, especially this second one. I think it needs it. I've seen the field next to me flooded. So uh, what I wouldn't want to do is the flood to overtop the road and wash the road out because then that would be a big deal. So spend a few minutes putting a culvert in and putting in some concrete uh, intakes on it and exits is probably the right answer. So, all right. So that's Steve, A Thousand Year Homes. Thank you for following along in my journal entry. I know uh, it's better to show than to talk, but today I, I I can't show you on that tractor. It's too noisy, too bumpy. I mean, it's a lot, all hard work. Uh, to do a road, a whole road. But uh, there it is. It's done. It's smooth. It's ready for this rain. It was raining while, while I was walking here. Big rain. Rain came in. Wind. So, but I appreciate y'all. Like, subscribe, follow me along. Bye.